In this video, we're given an infinite series, and we have to find the sum of the series. This is what's called a telescoping series. So telescoping series. And you can kind of tell uh, because of the form here. Notice it appears that you can use partial fractions to rewrite this uh, in a nice way. So because of that, series like this tend to telescope. The strategy here is to use the fact that this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth partial sum of the series. So we basically just have to figure out what the nth partial sum is and take the limit, and then we have the answer. By the way, this is true for every infinite series, right? This is always true. So the nth partial sum, uh, I'll write it up here so you see it, is simply s sub n equals a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus dot 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 plus a sub n. That's called the nth partial sum. And this here is your a sub n. So the strategy in these problems is always to first take a sub n and use partial fractions, then write it out like this, and then things will cancel. And then you take the limit, and then you're done. Let's start by writing out a sub n and using partial fractions. So this is 12 over n, and then we have n plus 2. So this is equal to a over n plus b over m plus 2. OK, let's go ahead and use the cover-up method uh, to find a and b. So the cover-up method says that to find a, for example, you look at what's under a, and you ask yourself, hey, what makes uh, that 0? Well, 0, right? n equals 0 makes, makes this fraction undefined, right? What makes the fraction undefined, or what makes the bottom 0? Then you go over here, and you cross it out, and you plug in 0 everywhere else. So it's 12 over 0 plus 2, which is 12 over 2, which is 6. So a is equal to 6. So a equals 6. So that's our first variable. And to find b, we do the same thing. We say, hey, uh, what makes the bottom piece here 0? Well, negative 2. Right? That creates a problem. That makes the fraction undefined, or equivalently makes the bottom piece 0. So you go over here, and you cross it out. Now I can cross it out. And it's 12 over. And you plug it in everywhere else, negative 2. So we just get uh, negative 6. Another way of doing this would have been to factor out the 12. We could have done that uh, as well. That might have been uh, a little bit easier, but Let's go ahead and keep going. OK, so now we're going to write down s sub n and see what happens. So s sub n is equal to a sub 1. Oh, oh, before I do that, let me go ahead and rewrite what we just did. <laughs> so a here is, is 6. So it's 6 over n. And then b is negative 6, so minus 6 over n plus 2. So this is our new a sub n. In fact, I'm going to write it down again up here. So we have it in a convenient place. So it's 6 over n minus 6 over n plus 2. I'm going to put this in a box because we're going to reference it. OK, so now we'll write down s sub n. So a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus. So how many do you have to write? Uh, there's no real answer here, um, just as many as it takes. So if you write down like one term, that, that's usually not going to work. So two or three will usually work. Sometimes you'll just need more. And how do you find out when those times are? Uh, when you get stuck. <laughs> so uh, I did a problem once. I had to write down like, I think like 10 terms in order to see the pattern. Uh, this is not one of those problems, I believe. Uh, it's going to end at a sub n, but let's write down a few terms before it. So how about a sub n minus 2? plus a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n. OK, all right. So this is s sub n equals. So a sub 1, uh, we're going to plug in 1 for all of the n's. So this will be 6 over 1 minus, and then plugging in 1 here, we'll get 6 over 3. plus. Plugging in 2 here, we get 6 over 2. So this, this first piece here is a sub 1. Okay, again, we just 
plugged in a one for all of the ends. Now we're doing a sub two, so six over two minus, and then plugging in two, it'll be six over four, right? Because um, two plus two is four, and this here is a sub two plus. Now we have a sub three, so that'll be uh, six over three minus, and then three plus two is five, so six over five, okay? And plus dot, dot, dot. So this piece here was a sub three. It's very, very careful and very delicate. Plus a sub n minus two means we plug in an n minus two. So that's going to give us six over n minus two. Notice how I put parentheses around each of the a's. It just adds a bit of clarity. Minus when you plug in an n minus two for your n, you'll get n minus two plus two. So you're just going to get n. So it's six over n plus and plugging in n minus 1, you get 6 over n minus 1 minus, and then 6 over n minus 1 plus 2 is n plus 1, n plus, and then the last one would be a sub n, 6 over n minus 6 over n plus 2. Okay, so now we are in a better place. Let's see, let me switch colors here, and let's try to find a pattern. Okay, so s sub n. It looks like the 6 is going nowhere, so we're going to have 6. And let's see, uh, 6 over 1, 6 over 3, 6 over 2, 6 over 4. Oh, look, 6 over 3. So this one cancels not with the one before it, but the one before before it. So 2 before it at the end, right? So 2 before it is this at the end. So 2 before it at the end. So this one cancels with 2 before it at the end. So this is this. This is not going to be able to cancel, so this is plus 3. Okay, this one should cancel with the one over here, because the one that you don't see here, where I'm writing this green line, see this green line here, this one will cancel with the one 2 before it at the end. Boom, 6 over 4. Again, this one will cancel with the one 2 before it at the end, 6 over 4. Likewise, this one will cancel with some magical piece over here. Um, we know that this one cancels with something over here. Uh, this one cancels with this, okay? This one should cancel with something over here, which we don't see. And then this one, these last two here don't cancel. So we have minus, uh, minus uh, 6 over um, n plus 1, minus 6 over n plus 2. Because right? the only pattern we determined was, well, one pattern, was that this one, cancels the one two before it at the end. So the six over five is still there, you see. That's why we're still stuck with, with these. Okay, we're still stuck with these. Um, okay, uh, so now we have nine minus six over n plus one minus six over n plus two. So pretty tricky, right? pretty tricky. Uh, it's always tough to find the pattern. Sometimes even if your pattern is incorrect, you'll still get the right answer, but um, it's worth doing it 100% correct. So now we'll take the limit as n goes to infinity. And these two pieces here are going to go to zero as n gets really big. So this is just nine. And that would be your final answer. So I hope this video has been helpful.